The Rover has been voted Car of the Year by many motoring authorities and journals. We agree with them, but we are also realistic enough to know that even with the best, problems can occur, and we want to help you, the technician, if things go wrong. In this programme, we will be looking at Rover Electrics and Fault Diagnosis. It is another in the Service Insight series of audio-visual programmes. The programme is in two parts. The first, an introduction, covers the more basic circuits, such as those for lighting, charging and starting. The second part covers instrumentation and the electrical equipment, which is either specific to the 3500 or is available on other models as an option. Because of the amount of information contained in the programme, you are advised to stop the projector as necessary and rerun any section you do not fully understand. You should also have your circuit diagram and key available for consultation. Keep in mind that the numbers used on the diagram are not all official Rover numbers. From time to time, we will refer you to relevant Stavi programs for further information on specific items. Both they and this program can also be used as a reference aid when troubleshooting. And as usual, an ammeter, ohmmeter and voltmeter are used for carrying out electrical test procedures. Your experience on other vehicles will have already introduced you to some of the more basic electrical equipment and circuits. For this reason, circuits such as the horn, the interior lighting and direction indicators will only be mentioned briefly. Other circuits which are specific to the Rover range will be covered in depth. We start by looking at the location of fuses and relays. First, the fuses. The main fuse box is located on the left-hand side of the instrument panel. The cover is removed by turning the button. Printed inside the cover, you will find a listing of the circuits protected by each fuse. The fuses are identified by the numbers of the terminals they bridge. Position 1-2 is not normally used. However, on cars fitted with air conditioning, this is the location of the main supply line fuse. Fuse 3-4 protects the heater circuit. On cars fitted with air conditioning, it protects the compressor electromagnetic clutch. Fuse 5-6 is labelled battery control. It protects the horn, clock and interior lighting circuits. Fuse 7-8 is for the hazard warning flashes. Fuse 910, labelled Ignition Control, protects the stop lamps, direction indicators, instruments and the brake failure warning circuit. Fuse 1112 protects the screen washer wiper circuit. The first four fuses on the top left of the box protect the right and left main and dip headlamp circuits. Fuse 2122 is for front and rear side lights, the rear fog lamps and the instrument panel illumination. Finally, fuse 2324 protects the front fog lamps. There are several possible line fuses. The radio fuse 1 and the heated backlight fuse 2 are located inside the instrument binnacle. Where optional equipment is fitted, there are additional line fuses. Their locations will be given in the second part of this program. In addition to the fuses, Cars fitted with electrically operated windows have a thermal circuit breaker. This is located behind the passenger's glove box. Now let's have a look at the relays, most of which are fitted to this assembly behind the passenger's glove box. The number of relays and their positions depend on the optional equipment fitted to the car. On this 3500S, eight relays are fitted here. They can be identified by the colours of their connecting leads. A relay, yellow, is also used in the start circuit. This is located on the right-hand side of the engine compartment. On cars with the optional headlamp wash wipe equipment, a further relay, green, is fitted near the washer pump assembly. 
The two flasher units which control the direction indicators and the hazard warning lights are attached to the brake pedal mounting bracket. Now, let us have a look at the basic electrical equipment available to the driver. First, lighting. The main lighting circuit comprises a master switch 1 to select side or headlights, a stalk mounted combination switch 2 which selects main beam, dip or flash, and the main lighting relay 3. Whenever the master light switch 50 is on, the relay 49 is energized. It supplies current to the fog light circuit blue and to the panel lighting circuit yellow. The front and rear side light circuit green is also powered by the relay but via the bulb failure monitoring unit 33. Supply to the headlight circuit red is from the master light switch 50 via the main dip flash selector 51. You may wish to study your circuit diagram before continuing with the program. Front and rear fog lights are controlled by separate panel mounted switches. On recent models, a relay mounted behind the passenger's glove box prevents the rear fog lights operating unless the front fog lights or headlights are on. The reversing light circuit is similar to that fitted to other BL cars. The circuit is fused and is operated by a gearbox mounted switch. One of the rover's many safety features is the bulb failure monitoring unit. Failure of a side or stop lamp will cause the panel mounted warning lamp to glow. The unit is located inside the car behind the left hand rear lamp cover. Let's see how it operates. Inside the unit is an integrated circuit arrowed which is energized while the ignition is on. When the engine is cranked a signal shown in red is sent from the ignition switch 45 to the monitoring unit 33. The monitoring unit completes the circuit shown in blue through the warning lamp 70 causing it to light. This is a test for the bulb which should go out as the starter is released. From the stop lamp switch 65 the stop lamp circuit yellow is completed through the monitoring unit 33. The side light circuit red is also completed through the monitoring unit. The side and stop lights receive current through these resistors on the left of the unit. The integrated circuit senses the failure of any lamp in terms of a voltage change and causes the warning indicator to glow. Any failure of the unit itself can be overcome temporarily by removing it from the harness, taking off its cover, refitting the circuit board the opposite way round and finally reconnecting the unit to the car. But this is only a temporary measure, as the unit must be replaced at the earliest opportunity. If a tow bar is to be fitted to the vehicle, the stop lights should be connected at point 1 and the side lights at point 2. Both on the switch side of the monitoring unit 33, not on the output side. Otherwise, the additional current drawn through the resistors would cause a heat buildup and could result in failure. Fitted to the engine bay, boot and glove boxes, their circuit is shown here in yellow. The lamps operate as the appropriate compartment is opened. Similarly, the interior lamps operate when any door is opened, the circuit is shown in green. Another safety feature on the 2600 and 3500 models is the front door guard lamps, which operate when any side door is opened. That completes this introductory section. If it has not been fully understood, rerun the section before continuing. Further information on the areas discussed will be found in the Starvi programs Basic Electricity, Vehicle Electrics 1 and Vehicle Electrics 2.